Oh, eh, borobol si mentok kebingan di tempat mampu. Oh, gua nggak usah nih, lanangan di tempat mampu. Nimbula, ayo Mr. Ben. Enlapa? Nah, bagi kira menolak kini dia lebih matakan moni cikin atau fakir rumbukan. Enabula FM, nama dua ada seling. UFDF members' participation in next year's elections not cemented yet. And find out where in Fiji are now classified as red zones for high rate of crime. Good evening, I'm Amrita Priya Darshni. Australia's opposition has crushed the governing Labour Party in a general election that has returned the Liberal National Coalition to power for the first time in six years. The coalition won 88 seats to Labour's 57 in the 150-seat parliament. Liberal leader Tony Abbott, who will be Prime Minister, promised a competent and trustworthy government. Outgoing PM Kevin Rudd earlier admitted defeat and said he would not stand again for the Labour leadership. One of the biggest opposition to the constitution and to the government, the United Front for a Democratic Fiji seems to be unsure if it will contest next year's elections. Made up of three registered political parties, the Fiji Labour Party, the Social Liberal Democratic Party and the National Federation Party, the UFDF has publicly stated their disapproval of the new constitution. So what happens once elections get underway under the very document that they oppose? Roland Koroi tries to find out. This was the scene last Friday, just hours before the president was to formally ascend to the constitution. Around 50 people claiming to be representing the people, publicly denouncing the new constitution. A few hours later, the signature that formally made the 2013 constitution the supreme law of the land. It's this document, Fiji's fourth constitution, that will lead the country to elections and beyond. There are provisions within the constitution that the government strongly believes will allow for free and fair elections without the anomalies of past year's elections. So for the group that continues to oppose this document, what happens come September 2014 or even before that, when elections does happen? You can't confirm whether you will stand for elections under this constitution? Oh, well, we'll hold them to their word. We want as far as possible. Uh, this constitution as is, the document, is unacceptable. That's not so it. just a simple yes or no, sir. Are you standing for elections under this constitution if it does go ahead? We want to hold them to their word and, and go to the elections okay. after everything is uh, satisfied. Okay. Under this constitution? Well, uh, my question is, if this con if election does go ahead under this constitution, will uh, individual parties from the UFDF stand for elections? We are hoping to hold them at their own word, that means... We will see if they set up all the necessary requirements as they say they would, and we'll take part. Attorney General Ayaz Said Kayum refused to be drawn into the so-called battle of words by those who are now termed as old politicians, only saying Fiji has entered a new era, and the people of Fiji have already joined the path to elections next year. Uh, and people are focused on the future. And unfortunately, a handful of people uh, are caught in the past. Uh, perhaps it's because they themselves cannot progress. Uh, Fiji uh, uh, needs to be a modern progressive state, and indeed it has become modern and progressive, and we cannot become complacent about it and focus on the future, as His Excellency and, on, and the Honorable Prime Minister said. The UFDF continues to oppose the government and all that it's done, refusing to acknowledge the positives that the Mbani Marama-led government has achieved. It also fails to acknowledge that despite its many outcries in public display of resentment, not much attention has been paid by the government, who today has reaffirmed its stand that the show will go on, with or without them, for the benefit of the people. Roland Koroi, FBC News. Fiji Islands Council of Trade Unions General Secretary Atar Singh has denied comments by Attorney General Aya Sayed Kayum that he's accepted the 2013 constitution. Singh says he's never changed his position, that he doesn't support the constitution. Vosita Kotewasawasa reports. Atar Singh claims it's an attempt by government to convince members of the Fiji Islands Council of Trade Union to support the constitution. 
we made no such uh, acceptance of the constitution to, to the minister. In fact, acceptance or rejection of the constitution was not a, not a matter for discussion. We were di discussing various aspects of the constitution and we pointed out which parts of the constitution, the, the key ones that, that mattered to our, our, our constituents, uh, that needed amendments. Now, for the minister to then claim that we accepted the constitution, I think that that is very, very far-fetched. Singh adds that he had met the Attorney General Ayaz Sayyad Kayyum at Nandi Airport last Wednesday where they had discussed the various aspects of the Constitution. The two issues that he raised with Sayyad Kayyum related to freehold land and leases. That he's made and the amendments that he wrote, read out to Mr. Baladas in the program, I am claiming that those amendments have been made as a result of his discussion with me. When I pointed out those issues and in, 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 in the, in, in the ambiguity uh, and clarity of those provisions and also the lack of security uh, for tenants, those are two issues. The Attorney General Ayaz Sayyad Kayyum says no amendments can be made to the Constitution without the approval of the Supreme Court. And as I also pointed out on the show, um, I think it was Baladas who had called, who was an NFP member, uh, also pointed out to him that under Section 6, uh, which is under Chapter 2, which is the beginning of Chapter 2, which is the Bill of Rights provisions, binds, it binds the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. In other words, all the three arms of the state are bound by the provisions relating to the Bill of Rights. So therefore, any law, not just whether it's ELTA or NELTA, but any law that Parliament makes or seeks to amend or seeks to repeal it must not go against the principles and the actual specific clauses that have been put in the Bill of Rights. Otherwise, it could be challenged to be unconstitutional. Sayyad Kayyum adds that these politicians are now playing their game of politics. It's all a game. It's, it's what they call politics for them. So what they say to you privately will be very different at times to what they say publicly. And I think because of the fact that I exposed this on the talkback show, has probably taken them aback. The government has remained adamant that the next elections will be held under the 2013 constitution despite political opposition. Wasita Kotimwasawasa, FBC News. The provinces of Neita, Siri, Lomaiviti and Tailevu have been classified red zones as areas where sexual offences are prevalent. Police have also classified Vudi Road in Nosori and Nakasi in Nasinu red zones where theft and burglaries are also prevalent. Mika Longa with the story. Acting Senior Superintendent of Police Tomu Mbulama made the revelations in an exclusive interview with FBC News. Uh, we have uh, rape cases that are happening uh, uh, in uh, Naita Siri. We have rape cases that are happening in, uh, in uh, Lomaviti and also are happening in, uh, in Tailevu area. We have a recent case in, uh, in Naita Siri. The victim uh, was an 80-year-old um, uh, lady. The map at the Eastern Division Police Command Center also have places within its area of operation marked where other serious crimes are also rife. Woody Road, that is uh, what we term as our red zone, where these uh, burglaries that are happening. Nakasi, we term it as our red zone. The prominent people that are living in Nakasi, especially business people, that are most, uh, mostly targeted by these criminals. Uh, when their houses are empty, uh, their, their houses have been burgled. Acting SSP Mbulama Mbal further revealed these crimes are also committed in some schools within the division. We also have schools that uh, all these uh, offences are committed. We, we have been visiting them and uh, conduct awareness on these uh, serious offences that are committed. DPC Mbulu Maimbao says they've been revisiting the communities who live in places where the crimes were committed to dig out more information. As far as this Nduwata community policing is, uh, is concerned, the, the, the job of a police officer doesn't end in court. So we need to establish the why part, why these crimes have been committed. So we need to sit down with the community and conduct more inquiries and awareness. The Deputy Division Police Commander Eastern with his men are trying their best to address the crimes in the red zones through the Ndovata Initiative. Mikalonga, FBC News. In the news ahead, Consumer Council makes submissions for the 2014 budget.
Nimbula, medhangu nimi lote na isoro tumboa. Na mwakia uminorua kina ono na vya kavi muni tiki na vaka rombuka. Rongo mwena vya sama kina vya vaka baro takini ndreko malolo. Enoridi ufiji wana na wongani vya ono yano. Ngai na mwakia ukina. नमस्ते दोस्तों मिर्ची रफ्तार से मैं अश्निल सिंह शामिल हो जाइए हमारे साथ मंडे टू फ्राइडे फ्रॉम 3 टू 7 पी एम वेलकम बैक विद एफ पी सी न्यूज टू मैन वर ग्रांटेड बेल वॉल अनदर टू रिमेन इन कस्टडी आफ्टर दे वर चार्ज फॉर स्टीलिंग एंड बींग इन पोजेशन ऑफ एक्सप्लोसिव इन ए स्पेशल कोर्ट सिटिंग इन बा यस्टरडे मोहम्मद फरूक अली एंड मुश्ताक अली हैव बीन ग्रांटेड बेल विद स्ट्रिक्ट कंडीशन that they report to the bar police station every sunday with a bail bond of $500 imposed on each of the accused solandeku and serupepeli namariwa were denied bail after they failed to produce sureties the pair will reappear in the tavua magistrates court tomorrow all four men are charged for alleged theft and being in possession of explosives belonging to vatukola gold mines on friday they appeared as suspects with the police filing for an extension to keep them in custody but this was overruled by magistrate Moses Inevalu in his ruling on Saturday. This is the first ruling made by a court following the ascending of the new constitution on Friday. 14 nurses have graduated as trainers in the public health sector after completing a one-week training of trainers workshop in Nandi. Nurses have been upskilled and will now be able to effectively carry out training not just for health professionals but the community at large. Christopher Chan reports. These nurses are now certified trainers, now able to reach out to community programs. Although they are professionals in their field of work, this training is vital. People may think that once you're qualified as a nurse or even as a doctor that you're able to train, but you need certain skills to be able to deliver training effectively. So that's why the program together with the Ministry of Health agreed that we need to upskill certain people to be able to carry out any type of training. OSAID is funding $33 million over a five-year period, providing assistance to the Ministry of Health. You know, you need certain skills to be able to deliver adult learning. We can't just stand up and do a lecture. So this training has really enabled them to look at um, adult learning principles to also plan a training program adequately. The program is supported by the Fiji Health Sector Support Program and the training conducted by the National Training and Productivity Center of Fiji National University. It is also in line with the current government's policy in terms of uh, eradicating or looking at the very alarming stats about NCDs, diabetes in particular, and uh, hypertension. And uh, these nurses, once they know this training aspect of it, they will go and roll out programs in the community. This is the second group of nurses to go through this program. The exercise will help strengthen the public health sector. Christopher Chand, FBC News. Various ministries, organizations and business groups have already started making submissions to the government for the 2014 national budget. This also includes the Consumer Council of Fiji. Council Chief Executive Premila Kumar says they've highlighted several issues in their submissions. Sharon Lata has more. The submission from the Council calls for affordable cost of living. Council Chief Executive Premila Kumar says the price for some food items have gone up and they are requesting the government to look into it. This is the price of milk, chicken, tin fish. Um, even now we are seeing the price of potatoes going up. Uh, some of these items, if it can be looked into so that it becomes more affordable uh, to the consumers. Kumar goes on to say that a better monetary system needs to be put in place. It has found out that consumers aren't benefiting from the reduction in duty by the government in previous budget announcements. Examples that we have currently, one is the smartphones where the duty came down to 0% and yet our market surveillance uh, shows that 71% of uh, the 87 uh, smartphones that we surveyed, uh, the prices have remained same. 
and uh, in uh, about 13 percent the prices went up protecting security deposit is also a challenge the council wants the government to form a security commission where all the security deposit can be collected and it can be put into an interest-bearing account to generate income. Kumar says security deposits should be used by the government in improving the living standard in Fiji. That is not happening. In other words, security deposit has now become an option um, for uh, the, the traders uh, to use that money to advance their welfare. But it's public money and that must be protected. The 2014 budget announcement will take place on 8th November 2013. Shahin Lata, FBC News. Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority needs forensics experts to effectively trace and detect cases of tax evasion. With the strengthening of the Proceeds of Crime Decree, which gives it more teeth against tax evaders, Perka CEO Chitoko Tikolevu says upskilling of officials is vital. Financial, eh? forensic accounting is required in terms of skills. So we'll need to do uh, really uh, upskill our people on these specialized areas. Eh? Improvement of certain provisions of the proceeds of the crime decree empowers FERCA to charge tax on unexplained wealth and assets and link it to the tax accounts of suspected evaders. And sports news ahead Team PG impressed officials at mini games. जहाँ हो प्यार का बसेरा और रिश्तों की खुशबू वो है आपका अपना घर संसार ज्वाइन मी ऑन घर संसार मंडे टू फ्राइडे नाइन एम टू ट्वेल्व पी एम ओनली ऑन रेडियो फीजी टू Hope you're enjoying the music right now on Gold FM. Only the classic hits, especially if you're spending your time at home or around the office. I certainly hope you're taking it easy and enjoying the music coming your way. Well, I got a whole lot more to keep you moving and to keep you going right up until you uh, reach lock-off time. I'm Kara. Join me every weekday from two to seven on the ride. Only on Gold FM. In FPC Sports Athletics, Fiji officials have been impressed by the performance of our athletes at the Pacific Mini Games. The fairly young squad has raked in their fair share of medals, led by sprint king Banuve Tambakal Doro, who set two games records in the process in the 100m and 200m sprint events. Athletes now have had a taste of the level of competition at regional standard. This exposure will serve them well for the future with a view to the 2015 Pacific Games in Papua New Guinea. There will be a lot of work needed uh, for us to do. And as mentioned, uh, the team that we brought, very young, very young, and I should say inexperienced team. And after this exposure, I believe uh, they will now understand what we mean when we now have to develop our team and we have to train for the next two years for the 2015 Games. It's not going to be easy. Uh, we just need the support and uh, hopefully when we go back home, we'll definitely prepare ourselves from next year following through to the Games in 2015. Meanwhile, Papua New Guinea still leads the race, sitting top of the medal tally after the first week of Games. The 2015 Pacific Games hosts have collected 24 gold medals, 18 silver and 22 bronze. New Caledonia, Tahiti and Samoa follow suit respectively, with Fiji sitting on fifth position. The Fiji beta suicide has shown it will not relinquish its grip on the Fair Brother Trophy after a sterling performance against Namorsi yesterday. In what could be deemed as an entertaining game of rugby, both teams displayed some brilliant brand to keep the crowd on its feet. But handling errors and wrong decision making that proved costly for Namorsi. Forward he went, and here come again. This is a chance, and the breakthrough has come. The ball lost to the ground, picked up by the 22. Away they go again. A little chip, a push forward more than a kick, and eventually a tap forward again. And who gets best sort of play? He works it forward as the the backs go round, yes. and the ref when they run with the ball, but they manage to, to recover. They get it out, out wide it goes across. There's Um Bortier, broken through a tackle, broken through a second. Man, and out it lobs out into the open. 
open. Out wide it comes, and there the speed gets them through. Rewa Youth has claimed the Fiji Sun GP Batteries National Youth League title after defeating Bar Youth in a one-sided affair. Fiji FA officials say the three-day competition has been an eye-opening experience on the raw talent in the Development League. Chalindo Zakazaka reports. After three days of matches at Saraswati Grounds in Manova, it was up to Rewa Youth and Bar Youth to battle it out for the National Youth League title. The hosts proved their worth, thumping the junior men in black. 4-1. Officials have praised the teams that have come out strongly to represent their districts with pride. The level of competition is uh, quite high. We can see few super premier players. They are playing for the youth team uh, where they fall in the age category. The display of football will not go unnoticed with Fiji FA officials keeping a close watch on standout performers. Yes, our selectors are here. They are doing the selection for next year's under-20 team. And definitely there will be selection from this. Match. Tournaments like these work wonders in exposing raw talent that can be nurtured for national duties. Talendo Kazaka, FBC Sports. Fiji and international striker Roy Krishna has signed for Auckland City for the ASP Premiership competition in New Zealand. The 26-year-old played 102 games for Waitakere United, scoring 71 goals. Krishna has also represented Fiji in the international arena 22 times. The former Lombasa striker signing comes at a pivotal moment for Auckland City as they prepare for the FIFA Club World Cup in Morocco in December. to weather and as predicted yesterday it was the perfect Sunday with fine weather experienced right across the country today. Lombasa maintains the lead on the temperature chart with 32 degrees while Sabu Sabu was the coolest today at 25 degrees. For tomorrow you should the weather should also be fine with just a bit of cloud cover for Suva and Sabu Sabu towards the afternoon. And looking beyond into the new week expect the fine weather and cool nights to continue. The headlines again, landslide victory, Tony Abbott wins Australian general elections, ending the Labour Party's six-year reign. UFDF members' participation in next year's elections not cemented yet, but government maintains elections will go on. And police identify areas at red zones for high rates of crime. With a poll question, and we ask, with Australia and New Zealand now supporting the new constitution, should all travel restrictions against Fiji stop? Visit our website www.fpc.com.fj to take part. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fpc.com.fj. That's FPC News for tonight. Good evening. How would you like to spend your morning? You could spend your morning like this. Or you could spend it like this. Tune in to the morning ride every weekday morning from 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. right here on Today FM, Today's Seed Music.